Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's meeting. Before we start the meeting, I'd ask our city clerk to give us a quote of the week. Thank you, Mayor. Vision without action is a daydream. Action without vision is a nightmare. Thank you. Call the 13th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Berg. Here. Serta. Excuse. Davis. Excuse. Graf. Here. Hannah. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clayunas. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Ryan. Here. Susha. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Verhasselt. 14 present. Quorum is present. This time, and, uh, I'd ask the 4-H Club to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Up front, please. Who's going to be the lead? One of you want to come over here? You get the mic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. President Burke. Uh, yes, thank you. I ask that we dispense with reading of the minutes and that they approve, be approved as entered on the record. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on the minutes? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item will be mayor's appointments and confirmation of appointments. Uh, the first one is dated today. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. All the person James Groff to be considered for appointment to the Blue Harbor Resort Convention Center Committee to fill the unexpired term of Alder person Jeff Radke, whose term expires 41607, signed by the mayor. That will lie over. And I reappoint Rick Scroggins, Marianne Keither, and Mike Vandersteen for new three year terms uh, on the Business Improvement District Board to expire 91109, signed by the mayor. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. Second. Motion to second to confirm. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. Thank you. Proclamation of uh, for appreciating Teen Month, I'd ask that uh, Jessica Dolsky step forward. This is a proclamation that we that I'm proclaiming appreciate teens month uh, this month and it's very appropriate because as, as you know our, the teens are our future and many of them hopefully will be sitting where you're sitting and I know it sounds scary but believe me it's a good thing okay <laughs> whereas the civic bodies and service organizations of our community and the departments of government recognize the great service rendered to the city of Sheboygan by the Family Resources Center of Sheboygan County, and whereas this organization of civic-minded members has contributed materially to the betterment of the city of Sheboygan through its participation and involvement in all areas of service, and whereas the Appreciate Teens Month Committee has set in motion a countywide Appreciate Teens Month promotion, now therefore I, Juan Perez, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim that October 1st through October 31st is Appreciate Teens Month. Thank you very much. Thank Congratulations. You. On, on behalf of the Family Resource Centers of Sheboygan County and the Appreciate Teens Month Committee, I'd like to thank you guys. Thank you. And I, I'd ask uh, Mr. Randy Meyer to step forward. And this is another one for our youth. Mr. Meyer, how are you, sir? Good evening. Good evening. Proclamation. 
whereas 4-H is a community where young people learn leadership, citizenship, and life skills, and whereas 4-H is one of the largest youth development organizations in Wisconsin, with nearly one in every 33 Wisconsin youth belong to a 4-H club, and whereas 4-H in Wisconsin claims 37,000 youth members and 14,000 adult volunteers, while Sheboygan County's 4-H program numbers over 1,060 members and over 400 volunteers. And whereas 4-H is part of the University of Wisconsin Extension Cooperative Extension System, is a program where youth learn together in all kinds of projects, events, and activities. And whereas 4-H has been helping youth and adults learn, grow, and work together for more than 100 years. Now therefore, I, Juan Perez, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim October 1st through the 7th, 2006, as National 4-H Week. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Perez. On behalf of the 4-H youth and the leaders of Sheboygan County, and also there are a few in the city of Sheboygan, we hope to increase those this year. I'd like to thank you for issuing this proclamation. I also have some, some gifts for the mayor. And if possible, we have a 4-H flag that could perhaps be flown over a location in the city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Form. Yes, um, Henry Capitillo. And Henry, I need your home address, please. 1619 North 38th Street, and that's the town of Sheboygan. Okay, you want to pull the mic up just a little bit, then we'll, there you go. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I would like the council to seriously look at the priorities that face you when developing and approving the budget for this coming year. You as elected officials must look at what city departments are more critical to the safety and well-being of this community. I know that you want to be fair and possibly ask all city departments to make the same amount of reductions or even more because of the budget situation. I have heard that the police department is being asked to make a reduction of over $534,000. I would like to ask if any of you have done any research on the crime statistics such as actual crimes committed, statistical changes in crimes, crime criminal offen offenders, victim characteristics, number of police officers in other Wisconsin cities and in the city of Sheboygan, and or increase in certain crimes. For example, every 23 23.1 seconds, one violent crime is committed. Every 32 minutes and 0.6 minutes, one murder is committed. Every 5.6 minutes, one forcible, forcible rape is committed. In fact, this is one of the crimes that has increased by 1.1% in the Midwest. Every 1.3 minutes, one robbery is committed. Every 36.9 seconds, one aggravated assault is committed. Furthermore, Every 3.1 seconds, one pr property crime is committed. Property crimes make up 75% of all crimes committed. Every 14.7 seconds, one burglary is committed. Every 4.5 seconds, one larceny theft is committed. Every 25.5 seconds, one motor vehicle theft is committed. Property crime not violent provided the highest percent of crime against persons aged 65 and older. About one in five personal crimes against the elderly were thefts compared to one in 33 in persons, persons ages 12 to 49. More than nine in 10 crimes against the elderly were property crimes while persons aged 12 to 24 experienced only four in 10. The estimated number of arrests of drug abuse violations for adults has been increasing, as has the number of adults convicted of a felony in state courts. In fact, the Midwest ranks second in the United States for sale and manufacturing of drugs. 
Over half of the increase in state prison population since 1995 is due to an increase in the prisoners convicted of violent offenders. The, percent of, the percentage of crime reported to the police has been increasing. In, frac, in fact, direct expenditures for each of the major criminal justice functions, police, correction, police corrections, and judicial, have been increasing. Local governments spend more criminal justice than state government and federal government. You may say, what does this have to do with us? My response is that Wisconsin and the city of Sheboygan are not immune to crime. We cannot insulate ourselves from what is happening. More and more, we are seeing an increase in crime within the city of Sheboygan. Ten years ago, it was not common to read such things in the Sheboygan press as man charged in home invasion, 45-year-old 45, 45 man char charged with felony child abuse. 24-year-old Sheboygan man was convicted in March of leaving a court appearance for beating his girlfriend to attack her again. <clears throat> Furthermore, it has been documented that we have a very serious drug problem in the city of Sheboygan that includes such drugs as crack cocaine, crystal meth, marijuana, prescription drugs as Oxycontin, Vicodin, and other such narcotics and, and dangerous narcotics such as heroin, morphine, and methadone. You may say, this is hard to believe, but it is true. Just ask the policemen and policewomen that work on the streets of Sheboygan. Just ask yourself, how many crystal meth labs have been found operating in the city of Sheboygan and have been shut down by our police department? I say to you, now is not the time to be cutting the police budget. Be responsible and look into these issues. You cannot say I support the police department and look to slash their resources to fight crime. Keep in mind, the city has already provided developer, developers loans such as Blue Harbor, $4 million, and all they have to do to pay this back is to pay their property taxes. Sheboygan Senior Community, Inc., $2.5 million grant is an incentive payment. If the city can afford to make these kinds of deals with developers who stand to make millions, such as the former CEO of Great Lakes, who received a bonus of close to $2 million when the co company went public. How many millions of dollars will Sheboygan Senior Community, Inc. be making? Excuse me, Henry, would you it, like an additional minute? Your five minutes are, yes. would you like? It, how many millions of dollars will Sheboygan Senior Community, Inc. be making? It is, is it asking too much to make the same kind of investment in our police department to fight crime? When looking to attract new businesses development in the city of Sheboygan, keep in mind they too must share the burden that other homeowners and existing businesses already are responsible through their local taxes. Do not lessen their tax responsibility at the expense of cutting other city services such as law enforcement. The city of Sheboygan is entrusted the tax the city of Sheboygan is entrusted by the taxpayers to generate revenue for the city and not just spend their money. Thank you very much. Thank you, Henry. And that is it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is uh, I'd like to make some comments to the council, to the, the community. First thing I'd like to talk to the council about would be the uh, perhaps asking you to revisit the rules of order, procedure, and conduct. And it's this little booklet here that was prepared and adopted by the council in March 6 of 06. There's been some concern that perhaps uh, aldermen and committee members are getting a little bit lax uh, in procedure and conduct during some committee meetings. And it's a, particularly, uh, a particular concern because you deserve respect. You've earned the title of alderman, and you deserve respect from the public and respect from each other. And that's very important because when we break that respect, we break more things than we can envision at times. And it's very important uh, to, to, uh, to not only extend respect to ourselves, but to remind ourselves what it is that, what our relation is to each other and to the community. So again, I would ask that please review the general rules. If you don't have a copy, my office can provide one for you. 
And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. The other area I'd like to talk about would be the, you hear so much, we hear so much talk about taxes. And we've, we've talked about taxes before in, in, in the Committee of the Whole and in other committees. And the city in Alderman, and in particular the mayor, uh, gets blamed for high taxes. Uh, you get blamed for high taxes, and you get blamed for a lot of things, and, and so do I. And that's just the nature of, of the job that we have, and we have to live with that. I, I always joke that I, I put in uh, 10 to 12 hours of work, get blamed for 20, and get paid for five. And that's just the way it works. <laughs> and I feel that some of you may, may do the same thing. But it's important to know that property taxes are, are tax and levied, collected and levied by five political entities. And that's the school district would be the biggest uh, entity to do that. And they, 38% of your dollars, tax dollars, goes to the school district. Now, why am I saying that? That's because everybody thinks that the city taxes are just city taxes. The taxes people pay are divided in five. The city's portion is 33%. And I know I've joked before, but and the more I think about it, I think I'm serious. We, sh we deserve only 33% of the criticism because that's the amount of taxes that uh, we assess. The next entity would be the county. They're responsible for 22%. Now, you don't hear much about the county, but they're still collecting taxes from the city taxpayers. A little over $13 million of city taxpayer dollars is on the county tax levy. And many have asked, what do we get for it? You need to ask that question yourself. The other entity, political entity, would be LTC, the Lakeshore Tech College. They collect about 6%. Now this year, their, uh, their levy is going to go up about 3.5%. That's LTC. The state always gets a little bite of the apple, so the state's going to get 1%. Those are the five entities that are collecting taxes from our residents here in Sheboygan. School, city, county, LTC, and the state. Now, it's important to note that the council and I have been challenged to keep a 0% increased tax uh, levy. The problem there is that if the county does not do the same thing, the school does not do the same thing, LTC does not do the same thing, people are still going to see an increase in taxes. And guess who's going to get blamed for it? We are, for the most part. It's important that we challenge the other entities who are responsible for this tax burden, if that's what you want to call it, to meet our, our standards of, um, of, of performing in government, and that is at a 0% increase. The school is likely to go up. The county, as you know, announced in the paper, I believe, last week, they're going to go up 2.3%. And I believe that's their cap. That's about as high as they can go. Ours is about one3 under the 2% cap limit that we've got. There's people now, and you've heard it tonight, uh, concern about cuts being made in the budget. You have to make a choice. You can't cut taxes, and you can't increase expenditures. It just doesn't work that way. Our expenditures far exceed our revenues, and they create this little gap, big gap, called a deficit. So we have to adjust that either way. And that's the challenge, because somewhere in between there is our job, and that is to provide the basic services people expect, deserve, pay for, in a consistent, effective, cost-effective cost manner. And we have to do that and weigh it against their ability to pay. That's what they're asking us to do. We have a job not only to do that, but also to try to inform the public about what our job is and what it is we're trying to do. Many times, because we propose a tax cut or we propose cuts in, in departments, we're perceived as anti this, anti that, or you, you're not being sensitive to the needs, you're not being sensitive to that. It's not the case. All we're trying to do is be good managers of the revenues that we have and good stewards of the taxpayer money. That's all we are trying to do. 
Now, the other thing that I'd ask the councils to consider would be to, to consider being a disseminator of information, as I said, and to champion the positive things that are happening in Sheboygan. There's a lot of good happening in Sheboygan, and I think it would, this message would be stronger if 16 aldermen and the mayor would champion the positive message out in the community. We have a responsibility to go talk to people and say, this is what's going, this is what's happening good in our community, because there is a lot. The other thing that I think that, that we need to do is, when we talk about informing the public, we need to let the public know the, a lot of the basis for our decisions. And by that, I mean, we don't have to say, well, this is, a, this is what I took into consideration, I took this into consideration. But I think that when, when you make a decision, and I've said it before, you represent a district, but you don't just impact that district, you impact the whole community. So your job is a little bigger than just representing your district. Along those lines, we're gonna have to consider making some tough choices in our budget. And there's gonna be repercussions for that and reactions for that. But if we don't have, if we don't call upon our political will and strength as aldermen to do what we need to do, we're always gonna have the same problems. And I'm willing to say tonight that a 0% increase in the levy may just not fly next year. We have cut to the bone. This year is cut into the bone, folks. Next year, a 0% increase in the levy is going to mean, positively mean, cutting people away. You're going to have, and I'm not talking just two or three, you're talking about a lot of people are gonna to have to get out. Because our expenditures are gonna reoccur, they're gonna increase, and our revenue isn't going anywhere. So our problems, if you think they're bad today, they're gonna to be worse next year. And this is not a doom and gloom message. This is reality, folks. This is what's going on. And we need to be very cognizant of that. I am hoping to work with some departments in looking into some structural changes. Now, I've said it over and over again. From a managerial standpoint, I have to look at organizational structure. In my mind, the problem and our solution lies in the same structure. Sometimes you have to reshuffle the card, the cards and that may be what we have to do. So I'll be talking about possible changes in restructuring in our, in our organizational structure. I hope we have the support to do that. If we don't, that's okay. We're gonna to have to live with that decision not to act and that'll have an impact next year. And I say that because we have to look at the big picture. I look at the back big picture. I cannot afford, I don't have the luxury as much as I'd like to have a luxury of picking favorites. I can't say the police department is my favorite, let them have more money. I can't say the fire department is my favorite, they can have more money, or any other department. I have to treat every department just as fair and just as equitably. Because the minute you give one department more money, guess what happens? Somebody takes a hit. That means somebody's gonna have less money in their department, because all you can do right now, folks, is shift money. All you're doing is shifting money. The only way I can address that and live with myself is to treat people, treat departments fair and equitably when we do appropriations. Now, having said that, if anybody knows of a better way, please tell me because I'll tell you, I've looked at this budget, flipped through pages over and over and over again for the last year, and I don't see any other solutions other than a lot of action happening at the state legislature. And there's another issue that I'll be working this coming year is working pretty hard with our state legislatures to enact legislation that's going to give us the tools for us to do what they're asking us to do, and that is to be more fiscally responsible. I don't think you should ask someone or any political entity to be more politically responsible, I mean, most fiscally responsible not give you the tools to do it. So we're gonna to have to, I'm gonna to have to go up to the state level and pound and pound and pound, hopefully get some, uh, some changes done there. We have a mandate by the people, make government affordable. That's all I'm trying to do. 
trying to make their government affordable to them. That's all they're asking. And if it takes going out and disseminating information on behalf of the council, just think of the leverage we have here, 16, 17. If we all go out into the community and inform, we could gain a lot of ground. I do it every day if, as, as the opportunity comes, but it, it's, it's a lot of work. All that, all that worked in, you're going to have a lot of pressure put on you. You're going to have a lot of pressure put on you by people who feel that this department should get more money, or that department should get more money, or this department should get more money. You're going to get phone calls, you're going to get letters, you're going to get emails, you're going to get stopped in the street, you're going to get stopped in the store, you're going to get bombarded. That's the way things are happening, that's the way things are. I go back to asking you to have the political will. You are the people, the people of Sheboygan elected to do a job, and I think we have a responsibility to do a job and do it well, keeping the entire community in mind, keeping our entire municipal government in mind, and not picking favorites at all. Thank you very much. Next item, consent agenda. President Burke. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move to accept and file all our rolls, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all the general ordinances. Second. Motion and second. 13-1 uh, to 13-16, any discussion? There be a none. Please call the roll. Bourne. Aye. Berg. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Cleunas. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Racky. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Verhasselt. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications. 1317 to be referred. 13. Report of officers 2. 1318. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for suspension of the rules. There are motion to second. Is there any objection to that? There being none, please proceed. I would ask that the report of officers be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion to second to accept and adopt. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor, do we need a rule code? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. 1319 uh, will be held for when we act on 1337, please note that. 1320 lies over. 1321 through 1336 to be referred. Please note that on 1325, the appropriate committee to be referred to is Marina and Harbor Committee and not City Plan. 1325, change the committee. Resolutions introduced three, 1337 by Alderman Meyer, authorizing entry into a contract for the end park splash pad outdoor water playground. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for suspension of the rules. Second. Motion and second. Is there any objection? There being none, please proceed. I would ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Put the resolution 1337 upon its passage under discussion. Uh, uh, President Burke. Yes, sir. thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to vote against this in light of the fact that we just talked about uh, controlling our expenses. Although there is uh, probably a few hours that are spent setting this up, we're talking about essentially an unfunded liability whenever we have block grant money that involves equipment such as this. And the disconnect for me is we are going to approve this this evening. Uh, and then we'll cut public works budget, but yet they're the people that are empowered in, 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 to uh, maintain the facility. And it's such things as draining pumps, uh, making sure the thing is working, etc. And I think when we start to draw the line, a splash pad I think is a very nice uh, addition to the city, uh, but I don't think it's particularly necessary. And in the future, I would uh, I'll likely be bringing in uh, a resolution so that every time we have a building project like this, we have some idea of what the expense is rolled up uh, pro forma year after year. So thank you. Thank you. Alderman Barn? I had a, I had a question on, on another document. That, that we're going to act later? 
Uh, it, was, it was on number 1320, but... I am sorry. I'm sorry. Do you want me to do that now or after we're through? 1320 it? was... Uh, that was going to be... Uh, that lies there. over. I'll come back to it as soon as we get down here. We have other aldermen. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. If my memory serves me right on the splash pad, we approved it in capital improvements last year for the capital improvements. And to me, this is a quality of life issue in that area. You have so much residential, you have schools, lots of children, and I think it's just going to be a great addition to that area. And um, I would ask if Tom Holton could step up and comment on it a little bit. Thank you. Mr. Holton, please come to the podium. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, Alderman Benavidez is right. It was approved in capital improvements for last year for this year, $125,000. The bids came in at under $116,000. Uh, there isn't a lot of maintenance to it. The park shelter that was constructed a few years ago was constructed to accommodate that structure, so it's plumbed. Uh, we just have to extend the water out uh, about 100 feet to where the pad's going to be. Uh, as far as uh, operational costs, you're probably looking at a couple thousand dollars worth of water uh, and any repairs it may uh, need on the apparatus itself. But uh, as Alvin Vander really said, it's, it's a quality of life issue. It's going to serve a lot of the north side of the city. Uh, the splash pad down here is a huge success, and uh, to me, it's worth every penny. Mr. Holton, let me just ask you a question. Do you have any objection to the splash pad being put up? No, I do not. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, sir. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I will have to agree with President Berg on this issue. If uh, we are indeed in uh, such financial straits as a city, um, when it comes down to we're going to have, uh, we're at a, a, a zero budget increase, uh, we're talking about possibly next year uh, doing away with people's jobs. Uh, when it comes to a splash pad or our city employees' jobs, I will uh, vote on the side of jobs anytime, so I will also vote against this. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I believe that when we borrow money for the capital improvements that we have to designate in the loan documents what we're going to be using the money for. And if we've already applied for the loan and we borrowed the money, I think we have to use it for the splash pad. This isn't something that we can transfer into employees' salary. Um, but I think that, uh, I mean, Alderman Berg brings up good points in regards to, I think we have to look at the long-term ramifications in the capital improvements uh, committee. Uh, we don't usually have many discussions on the maintenance, so I think he's bringing up a good point. And I also wanted to um, <clears throat> say that in the future, I think that we need to do things differently in capital improvements. For example, I've been saying this for a long time, we often go to that meeting and we get oral reports. Last year we were told orally that it was going to cost us $125,000. We approved $125,000. We did not have any bids in hand when we approved that money. And this is how the committee has run for years. Now we hear that the bid came in at $116,000, less, less than the amount of money we set aside. So my question is, if we would have approved $100,000 for the splash pad, would have the bids come in at $99,000? Because once we approve the money, that's public information. And any contractor can come down to City Hall and see how much money we've approved. And it's, it's really no wonder that we get some of these bids that we get. So I appreciate Alderman Berg's uh, comments. However, I do believe that uh, we've, we did approve the splash pad last year. We borrowed for it. And therefore, I will be voting uh, to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I certainly agree with Alderman Vanderweel. It is quality of life. Many children use End Park now, often, daily. And the parents of these little children live in Sheboygan and pay Sheboygan taxes. I definitely feel we should be doing this. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I just um, would like to add to my motion that we um, file the RO on that. <laughs> Is there a second? Uh, was there the second agree to that? Second. Okay. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> just to add to what Alderman Susha had said, um, this was something that was debated last year in 2005 in the capital improvements, brought to council in 2000, and, or the end of 2005 to be approved in 2006. The monies that were borrowed for this project must be used for for that type of project. Um, the, um, uh, 
and I'm sure Mr. Um, Mr. Um, um, Holton, excuse me, <clears throat> has um, included maintenance in his budget for 2007 for this, and um, uh, so it's it's covered in 2007. <coughs> and because it is, as two older persons have pointed out, uh, a quality of life issue, I think we need to do this. It's a neighborhood quality of life, and I'll I'll, I'll be honest with you, Council, if. Mr. Holton had said it's going to have a heavy burden on my department. I'd be the one saying, let's not do it. But I've asked him point blank, and he has no objection. Alderman Ryan. Thank you again, Your Honor. This is more of a question than a statement. If this money was borrowed last year and has not been spent, where is this money right now, if it has been borrowed? It's, it's a capital improvements program that borrowed at a certain day for the following year. That's the way it does. It carries over every year. So it's, so it's an over, account. So it's in the it's an account. city funds right now? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Okay. We will call the roll. Um, Berg? No. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? No. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? No. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 11 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 1338 by Alderman Susha, Graf, and Vanderweel to contract to contact the town of Wilson to see if they would like to contract with the city for fire protection. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 1338 upon its passage under discussion. There be, there be an Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Your Honor. I just said, really, just as a point of order, when, when an issue such as this comes up, uh, I'm assuming we work closely with the fire department to make sure that they're interested and this makes sense to the long term yes, plan. Yes, by all means. Okay. Good point, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I was wondering, are there any other uh, townships or areas that we're con contemplating communicating with? Uh, why is Town of Wilson chosen over other? I think Alderman Susha would be best to answer that. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, on the most recent election, the Town of Wilson uh, had a referendum question about purchasing a new fire truck, and they voted it down. So I looked at that as thinking it was an opportunity for us since we just built a brand new fire station right on the edge of the town of Wilson and the city of Sheboygan to just extend the opportunity for a discussion on if they would have any interest in contracting for fire protection services because I, I wouldn't want to see any harm come from people down the road from our brand new fire station. Um, and perhaps there's some interest, but we'll never know unless we ask. So it's just a letter asking if there's any interest and if there is, I'm sure it would come back to council and we can take it from there. And once that contact is made, Chief Lasuski, you will be apprised of all the all the details, Chief. Okay. We will call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1339 by Alderman Meyer, authorizing the proper city officials to enter into a into contract with traffic analysis and design incorporated for the Taylor Drive Corridor traffic signal study. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would again like to ask for suspension of the rules and then ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second to put resolution 1339 upon its passage under discussion. <clears throat> Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I looked at this document in 18,500. Oh, my, that's a lot of money to coordinate the signals. So I'm just asking how off are they? and how much coordination has to be done for $18,500. Mr. Holton, thank you. I'll be with you, Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, we're looking, this is a, a closed loop system on Taylor Drive from Superior Avenue to New Jersey Avenue. And uh, we have not uh, looked at that chain of signals uh, since Walmart went in uh, back in the, I think it was the early 90s we looked at it, I guess, when shop going in, I'm sorry. Uh, but it, it, it just takes a matter of a few seconds and changing the timing. It, uh, if you change it on one end, it could uh, change things, make it worse on the other end. Uh, this company will come in and count each intersection uh, one by one to get the traffic counts, turn movements. 
they have the software, uh, the, the programs to run the data through to come up with the ultimate timing, I guess you'd say, for the, the area. Uh, we do not not have the capabilities of doing that. And for a few seconds, it could save uh, a lot of gas for people going through there, therefore reduces emissions also. That's why we look at it. Okay, hang on. i got three lights. Uh, any of the aldermen wish to speak, want to address? Okay, hold, please stay there. Alderman Clay Eunice, you're next. Yes, uh, Mr. Holton, is this related to the new uh, Super Walmart as well? Is that part no. of why no, we need to do this? No, no, not at all. Thank you. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Holton, the Walmart on Taylor Drive at Taylor Heights is about ready to close. Why are we doing this, this study now? Why can't it wait till the springtime when we can see what the new traffic patterns are going to be out there? I mean, when Walmart pulls out of that, and I know firsthand from having worked in that store for many years, that there's a lot of traffic in and out, especially you know, on, on it uh, cut in by the community bank there in Erie Avenue. But with them pulling out at this point, you know, within the next month, month and a half, why, why don't we wait till the springtime to do this study? I think anything that's going to go in there is going to be retail, so it shouldn't change the pattern too much. But the real problems at uh, Taylor Drive and the ramps to 23, that's where we're having the backups and the most difficult time getting through that area. You can't get through all, all the lights. Usually you're you know, held, held up by one of them. Uh, that's where the bulk of the problem is on the north end. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I drive that area often, and I just wanted to say I agree with uh, Mr. Holton that that area needs to be looked at, and it needs to be tweaked a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman, well, you got all these like Christmas lights here. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I was a reluctant yes in committee on this issue and uh, asked the questions. I think common sense could resolve this if we just took some time. Uh, we could do it ourselves. But in fact, Mr. Holton noted that uh, there are clear guidelines from the state we're not so allowed to do. Um, so this is a company that's authorized, and so in my mind, it's necessary but reluctant money to spend. It's bureaucracy. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I think Alderman Manny expressed my feelings. But um, Mr. Holton, when you said the word emissions, that certainly meant a lot, because that is our quality of life here in Sheboygan. So I thank you for saying those words. But what we'd like to do, though, is we need to change the timing on the Rams to 23. Mm -hmm. We cannot do that on our own. The state controls that. We need to have documentation of why we want to do it. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with uh, Alderman Radke on his concerns with Walmart being moving out here in November, middle of November, I just wonder, I mean, no matter who goes into Walmart in the next two months, nobody's going to be as big of a draw as Walmart is. So the effect on the traffic pattern, I think, is just going to be so significant that we should wait until Walmart finds its new home. I, I don't, honestly, I don't think that's going to make much difference because the problem is at 23. Uh, and there's going to be some retail in Walmart. It may, you know, even a 1,000 trips a day is not going to make a lot of impact on that corridor. Uh, it, it, it's not going to, uh, holding off, I don't think it's going to change anything is what I'm trying to say. I think it's something that needs to be taken care of. We get complaints almost every day either in my office or at the service building on uh, the timing of the signals out there. Home Radke, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Holton, one other thing. When are you looking at doing this study? Uh, as soon as we're authorized, uh, probably it'll be a midweek. Um, I'm going to vote no on this. The reasoning being, and that's, uh, you answered the only question I had there, is because right now traffic patterns in Taylor Drive are extremely screwed up, including 23 and everything. I mean, I myself personally avoid using Highway or uh, Taylor Drive. I'll go 14th Street to get across town. But we've got Taylor Drive and Washington Avenue ripped up. Traffic patterns right now aren't going in the normal directions. Why would we want to spend this kind of money at this point in time when traffic is not moving at a proper pace in but, the city? Walmart will be done uh, end of October. That project will be finished up. We want to hit it before the Thanksgiving period when you have all the shopping out there. You don't design for the highest traffic volume of the day. So it would be done sometime after, near the end of October. Walmart's completed or nearly completed down there, back to normal, and before Thanksgiving. Well, my, my concern is, though, traffic patterns, is, it's going to take a while for traffic to start switching back to the way things normally go. For example, when I have to work at Deer Trace Plaza, right now I take Indiana Avenue at the county trunk A to avoid that area. 
And I, eventually we'll get back to using Taylor and Washington, but people aren't gonna just jump right back in there. And, and my concern is we're, we're jumping the gun a little bit here and we should hold back. But I think people will jump in because they're sick of taking a detour, which is a longer route. So I think they'll get back in there as soon as they can, in my opinion. Alderman Meyer, one more. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to express that I feel this is a lot of money also, but I do trust our department head, Tom Holton. He has the expertise and he gets the complaints, and I believe we should move forward on this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Holton. I'm sorry. Aye. I'm sorry. Yes. Aye. Thank you. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? No. Ryan? Yes, thank you. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Boren? Aye. And Berg? Aye. 11 ayes, 2 noes, and 1 abstention. Motion carries 1340 through 1343, lies over. 13, go oh, I'm ones. sorry, Number yes. 20. Hold on. Well, we'll hold off on to be referred. It's number 20, I think. I'm sorry, Alderman Boren, which one was it, sir? 1320. Uh, 1320. We're going back to 1320. Alderman Boren has some comments, and that's one that was lying over. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. Uh, when I read this document over this morning, I, I had a, a question that maybe uh, one of the older persons or one of the department heads can answer for me. Uh, on page one, uh, month 831.06 under revenues, under parts, uh, $2,609.16, and then down under cost of sales, uh, $2,609.16. My, my first question is, uh, when we're talking about parts there, are those boat parts that are being sold on there, or what exactly is that? And my second question is, if we're selling parts down there, uh, it appears that we're selling them at cost because the revenues are 2609.16, and the cost of sales is also 2609.16. So if somebody could answer those two questions, I'd appreciate it before we lie it over. Paulette, are you able to do that? Tom? Are you able to do that? Can we, we, can we get those answers for you? It's going to lie over anyway. Can we get yes. those answers for you, please? Mm -hmm. Okay. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Grout, did you want to comment on that too, sir? I was just going to say um, we will be discussing this at our next meeting. We didn't have a September meeting, therefore we didn't discuss this balance sheet. Okay. Um, so at our next Marina Committee meeting, we will be discussing it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Groff, do you want this then referred to the Marina and Harbor rather than lie over? Yes. Okay. 1320, refer to Marina Committee. Please make that notation, and we will get those answers for you, Alderman Board. Thank you. 1344 through 1346 to be referred. Report of Committee 7, 1347, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7222 based on her record of violations related to the license activity and her habitual violation of the law. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion? Under discussion. Is Rachel Cockwatosh here this evening? She's not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Any more discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Berg? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of committees 8, 1348 by, by finance recommending transferring appropriations in the 206 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. 
Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. And Grav? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1349 by Public Works, recommending closing the armory effective January, January 8th, 2007. Please note it did say finance, but there was a change made of Public Works. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to ask for suspension of the rules and ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second, put the resolution upon its passage. But I will and ask, was there any objection to that suspension at all? None, okay. And also the RC be accepted and filed. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Graf. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 91350 by Finance recommending amending General Ordinance Number 140203 so as to provide for the allocation of a portion of the cable franchise fund revenues to the Meat Public Library Fund. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. Mm -hmm. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Groff? No. Hannah? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10. 1351 lies over. 1352 through 1355 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1235, resolution number 1230607 by Alderman Graf, Hannah, Clayunas, Susha, and Boren, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. <clears throat> there being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clayunas? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 1356 will be referred to Committee of the Whole. 1357, a resolution by Alderman Boren, Berg, Serta, Davis, Graf, Hannah, Kittleson. Why don't I just say the whole council, right? Right. <laughs> authorizing, <laughs> authorizing the appropriate city officials to accept the donation by the Environmental Park Trust of Sheboygan County of the William A. Hayson Pavilion addition to the Ecology Center at the Elwood A. H. May Environmental Park. Alderman Boren. I'm sorry. I had oh, my light on my uh, mistake. Okay. Alderman Graf, just a resolution to put the motion upon his passage. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we put the um, resolution upon its passage. Good. Motion to second to put the resolution upon its passage. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Manny. That's two in a row first. Did I? Okay, let's try Meyer. <laughs> Meyer. Aye. <laughs> Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhassel, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, and Manny. Aye. 14. Motion carries. 1358, an RC by salary and grievances regarding reviewed management rights under union contract. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, under the management rights, there wasn't an attachment, but I did hand one out before the meeting. And since you probably didn't have time to digest all of it, I would like to just read a portion of it to you and then make a few comments. Um, if you want to start with the second paragraph, it says, the union recognizes the city's right to manage its affairs and direct its workforce. Furthermore, the city has all the customary and usual rights, powers, functions, and authority of management, including but not limited to the right 
to decide the number and location of its facilities, work and services to be performed, amount of supervision necessary, methods, means, and number of personnel needed, the amount and quality of work, and the right to change existing methods, utilize temporary and part-time employees, or purchase the services of others. If you go down to the bottom of that section, the very last one sentence paragraph says, the union pledges cooperation in accomplishing the above. There has been, um, I think, a little bit of a misunderstanding in regards to the role of city employees and also the role of aldermen. When we become aldermen, we have less than 15 minutes of training. And I think that uh, we need to clarify what we do and the separation between employees and the aldermen. We make decisions, we set policies. They come to work and they do their job. Um, when you read on in the contract, and now granted we have six contracts and they're all a little bit different, but, but the gist of it are pretty much the same from one contract to the next. And it seems that there is an agreement in regards to um, the grievance procedure. Both the union and the city would like to see grievances handled in a very timely manner. And there is a, a process that's outlined for city union employees to follow if they have a grievance. First, what they would do is they file uh, a complaint with their supervisor. And if the supervisor doesn't handle it quickly within a couple of days, then they can file a formal document with human resources and also with their union representative. And then if that doesn't progress the way they want in a couple of days, then they have the option of you know, going to mediation and arbitration with their grievance. But what's interesting, if you look at the bottom of this page, um, underneath the section, Grievance and Arbitration Procedures, item B, it says, item exempt from processing under the Grievance and Arbitration Procedure include the following. There is only one item listed, the creation or elimination of jobs. And this to me is very important. And the reason being is because at the last council meeting, um, it started with aldermen approaching me when I was outside. And it continued as I walked to my desk. Several older people received phone calls that day, during the day, um, relating to a transfer on the table of organization. All we were going to do was transfer a position from the computer department to the mayor's department. But we were not even allowed to talk about it because I believe our management rights were infringed upon without us even realizing it because during the day there was a city union employee that called several older people and her concern was that if we did this her job would change and she wasn't happy. So we needed to send this whole issue back to committee and I don't think it's right that the wheels of government come to a screeching halt every time a city employee isn't happy with the decision that we are about to make. And, and this has a lot to do with why I bring this up. I was told by another city employee that I did not have their permission to make such a, a change. And, and I think we have to respect some of the work that Salary and Grievance is doing because we, we have listened to all the department heads, we've been listening to what they do, we've asked them lots of questions. We're looking at making some suggestions to the table of organization. I think it is possible to reach a 0% increase in the tax uh, rate because we have it pretty heavy up at the top. We're not going to be cutting the worker bees. We need people out there picking up the garbage. We need police officers on the street. But do we need so much management up at the top of the table of organization? And these are the issues that we're going to be discussing. And I think that I'm asking for cooperation from city employees to let the aldermen do their job. If you have something you'd like to share, I'd be open to some positive suggestions for a change. And maybe if you have some good ideas, funnel it up through your supervisor and hopefully they will channel it to the right department. If it's a good idea, we need to start implementing it. I think answers often come from within an organization and, and it would be one, wonderful if employees would step up with some positive suggestions on how to make us run more efficiently. And you know, I, I was told this numerous times uh, when I worked full time outside the home, that life is too short. And if you truly are that miserable and unhappy with your job, perhaps you should look for greener pastures. And you know, I always laughed when I heard that. It didn't have much meaning to me until one day when I had a life-changing event and suddenly I realized how important my family was. And what kept running through my head was that, that phrase I had always heard at the annual meeting, that if you're not happy with your position, if you're not happy with what you're doing here at the city, we're not keeping anybody here. Life is short. Happiness is important. And I would encourage unhappy city employees, if you are that truly miserable, 
that perhaps you need to start looking in the, in the paper and see what else is out there. Because we don't want to keep anybody here against their will. They're welcome to go whenever they want. And um, with that said, I just hope that, that it's a little bit clearer now for everybody in this room in regards to what the role we have. We might be faced with making some tough decisions about rearranging the table of organization. And I would ask that um, if people have questions about what Salary and Grievance is doing, that uh, aldermen come to our committee meetings and the public can come. You know, employees, if they want to come, we hold it over the lunch hour. So we, we welcome everybody to come to those meetings. And um, if anybody's got questions about what the committee is doing, please feel free to give one of us a call um, and give us some suggestions. I mean, we're open to ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> After going through this and and, and reading this several times um, and wondering what was exactly going to happen. Uh, I'm certainly glad we, we got this and I would, I would like to see that all the department heads get this off also because they are, the department heads are the management for the city. And uh, if you read paragraph three in, in this management rights, it says, it is further recognized that the responsibility of management of the city for the selection and direction of its workforce including the right to hire, suspend, or discharge for cause, assign, promote, or transfer to determine the amount of overtime to be worked, to relieve employees from duty because of lack of work or other reasons vested exclusively in the city. The union recognizes the exclusive right of the city to establish reasonable rules and regulations. And this is going to become very important, if not in 2007, for sure in 2008. And our departments have, have to realize that they have management rights and something to back it up. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, thank you, Alderman Susha, for bringing this to us. As Alderman Graff said, um, the department heads certainly give us valuable information, and I think Alderman Graff is right that they'll want to see this also. And at the end of the day, we, the council, have to make those tough, rough decisions. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, First, I, I think that the whole council should recognize that the morale of a lot of city employees is at a low right now. I don't think we have any city employees that don't want their jobs. I don't think we have any city employees that, that don't like their jobs that would rather be elsewhere or they wouldn't be here. Um, this this uh, management rights brief here, basically, um, the issue that we're speaking of is, I take it, the uh, IT information te technician for the city. Uh, is that correct? That was one example. Okay. Um, I don't think that this issue was a, a union, non-union issue. I, I believe it was uh, something different where we were, were taking a, an employee from one department and putting him in another department and uh, to take the information technologies person from the uh, IT department and put them under the mayor's control right now in the city, I don't think, number one, the pay grades did not save any money. Um, you know, if it's, if it's a money-saving move, I don't think we accomplished anything in doing that. Um, I believe that is the cause of this coming out. Um, it, uh, I don't believe it's a union, non-union non -union issue or an infraction by the union. I believe it is a, uh, an issue of a, a information technologies person going from his place of employment right now in the union and being changed to a different department. And I believe that's the issue here. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. One final comment before we uh, call the vote there. I don't, I really don't believe that anyone is trying to say we should not work with the unions, we should not cooperate, that, that somebody or someone is doing something wrong. Um, I have a tremendous um, amount of respect for, for unions. Uh, I know their value. I have friends who are union members. But I think the message is, is, is it's, it's more embedded in the perception that people have of the council and the city, and that is that for the longest time you hear unions control the city, unions call the shots. And, and that perception is so deeply embedded that people have started to believe it. 
And I just want to clarify for you. You are the ones that get elected. You are the ones that may not get reelected. All uh, union members, our employees see aldermen's come and go. They see mayors come and go. They don't get elected. They don't have to be accountable to the people. You do. So it's that perception that you need to deal with. And I think what Alderman Sucha is trying to address tonight is just simply showing you where the answer is. The answer is in the contract that everyone signed, that everyone agreed to abide by, that we are supposed to honor. That's where the struggle is going to lie. And this is what I talked to you earlier about. The minute you try to make a change, you're going to have 30 people jump up and say, don't do that, don't do that. You're going to have to arm yourself with the correct information and the political will to say, I'm sorry, that's not your job, that's my job, I'll take care of it. If people feel that you made the wrong choice, they can deal with you in election time. But you're going to have to distinguish between your role as an elected official and the role of our employees and how they connect to the city government as represented employees. That's all I think from what I gather that you're trying to say. Uh, Terry McLean. Uh, just, I agree with everything that's been said here. However, uh, put things in perspective, uh, I pulled out the, the statute, the Municipal Employment Relations Statute, it's 11170, and it defines collective bargaining. And in the definition, it indicates the municipal employer shall not be required to bargain on subjects reserved to management and direction of the governmental unit. And that's what we're talking about, management rights. And you have the right to make certain decisions contractually and just under common law and the general rules of bargaining. Uh, but the statute goes on, except insofar as the manner of exercise of such functions affects the wages, hours, and conditions of employment of the municipal employees in a collective bargaining unit. So it's, it's a two sides of the coin. You have the right to make certain management decisions, but the statute requires that there be um, uh, bargaining on as to the effects on the collective bargaining unit members. So um, to say that you can just unilaterally make the change, yes, you can. But there are impacts to bargaining unit members. And doing that, you've got a duty under the statute to uh, collectively bargain that. Now, perhaps in the contract, if there's provisions on layoffs, or transfers that have already been negotiated, that's, you've already agreed to your obligation to uh, negotiate the impact of the decision. But uh, just, just a caveat that it's not a total one-way street. Thank you. Alma well, Susha, and we'll call a vote. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just to clarify, like an example of what you're talking about, I would assume, would be that if we, let's say we eliminated a, a union position, just took it off the table of organization, that person would have bumping power to take a different job on the table of organization. And ultimately, what most likely would happen is the lowest person on the totem pole would be laid off. Is that, in a sense, that's, what you're saying? Is that right. It is our responsibility to work with them to make sure that uh, the proper bumping order is followed, correct? Exactly. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Almasusha. President Burke. Yes, so thank you, Your, Your Honor. Uh, one comment, I think there's the letter of the law, which has been uh, defined in black and white, and I think there's also the spirit of the law, and it involves some uh, fairness and parity. If we are going to discuss matters like this, I believe we are all well served if we can do so under the light of day, to have it an open session, uh, to invite uh, those folks who may be affected in the hope that we can establish some rapport and level of peace and harmony if this is a good idea. I think it's wise for us to debate that, if you would, in the light of the public rather than in a private committee. Thank you. Thank you, President Burke. 1358, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1359 has been added to your amended agenda. Please refer to that. Resolu uh, 1359, a resolution by Alderman Groff authorizing the mayor to sign application for grant funding from Walmart. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask for a suspension of the rules, please. Is there any objection? Please proceed. Then I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Vanderbilt. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just because when I see grant funding and Walmart together, I, could we just have an explanation of, of uh, what's going to happen with this resolution? Sure. Um, Excuse me. Okay, the I'll deadline for, um, for signing this and accepting the, uh, the grant that uh, Walmart will be giving the city is uh, tomorrow. And that's the reason for suspension and so forth. And Walmart has offered the city of Sheboygan the opportunity to apply $7,000 um, of a grant towards city playground equipment and an additional $5,000 for Mead Public Library um, literacy program. And um, it's a free will offering. There's no strings attached or anything to it. And uh, Walmart needs the mayor to sign it tomorrow in order for us to accept it. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this is a situation where no matter where you fall out in your opinion of Walmart, I think it, it's in the city's best interest uh, that we accept and, and negotiate uh, grants such as this that are offered to us. Uh, Walmart is a fact of life in our community, and I think we need to optimize that. Good point. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Okay. We will uh, call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Rehassel? Aye. Warren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Was that an aye? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. 13-60 is an RO by the city clerk submitting an application for a private well permit from Richard J. Stefani. 1050 Riverdale Avenue. That lies over. 1361 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Carter Paulus regarding the stormwater fee ripoff of taxpayers and stating that the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliances recommends that the fee be abolished. And that will be referred to finance and public works. 1362 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Mary Zarafanetis stating that the city should not tie up the South Pier District and waste the taxpayers of Sheboygan's time with bringing the USS Edson to Sheboygan. That will be referred to Marina and Harbor Committee. 1363 is an RO by the Director of Planning and Development submitting an agreement between the city of Sheboygan and Wisconsin Naval Ship Association, Inc. for birthing of the USS Edson in the Sheboygan Harbor. That will be referred to Marina and Harbor Committee. 1364 is an RO by the Finance Director Treasurer submitting the Municipal Court Finance Report as submitted to the State Treasurer and a statement of Municipal Court Revenues and Expenditures as of August 31, 2006. And that will be referred to the Municipal Court Advisory Committee. Oh, excuse me, Alderman Bourne. Your Honor, I would also like to see document uh, 1363 also uh, referred to the Committee of the Whole. Because I think after the Marina, uh, Marina Harbor Committee is through this, I think there's going to be quite a bit of discussion needed on this agreement. So I would, I would also like to see it go to that. It will be done. Uh, it's 1363, Marina and Harbor Committee and Committee of the Whole. Alderman Ratke, motion. Is there a second to adjourn? Second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned.